Okay, so we're going to do a study here from the Interlinear Bible, Hebrew, Greek, English, coded with Strong's Accordance Numbers by J.P. Green. We're going to go ahead and open up to Numbers chapter 21, verse 8, I believe it is. Let me see. Um, oh, that was... Okay, so Numbers 21 and um, verse 8, it actually says right here... <clears throat> God told Moses to make a seraph. Now, they translated that fiery serpent, but as we can see, 83.14, he actually just says make a fiery serpent there is in parentheses, so that was added later. He actually says make a fiery, which is the um, seraph. And then down here we see um, that this is Nakash, because it says Moses, a serpent of copper. So um, that actually later... Um, becomes an object of worship in 2 Kings. And we'll look at that real quick because it says that um, in 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 5, right here, it says, New Hushtan. And um, that's what they called it, but it says that they were um, worship worshiping it. And he beat it in the bits. Hezekiah did. It was called... Um, it's the serpent of bronze that Moses has made that Moses had made. And um he called it Nehushtan. So as we saw from here, we see that it is Strong's number 8314 for Seraph. And we're gonna flip over now to Isaiah. So we're done with these marks right here. Now we're gonna go to Isaiah. And in Isaiah chapter Six, we see that there were these seraphim, plural, seraphim. But it's still 8314. It's just when you have the, the I am on the back of a Hebrew word, it makes it plural. So seraphim. And these healed Isaiah's lips. As we saw in Numbers 21 with Moses, it healed the people who were bitten by the serpents. So you can read Isaiah 6 here. Very interesting. The seraphim are, as we saw what Moses made when God told him, the winged serpents are the serpent on the pole. And we know that they're winged because right here it says that they're winged. So the seraphim, and um, over there, Moses makes the serpent on the pole, the seraph. And they heal. They heal here, and they healed over there. So we can see how... Um, Serapis, um, I wrote this over here, Serapis was actually an Egyptian god, and that sounds a lot like Seraph in a way. So we see how the Egyptians could have corrupted that, and that would go back to um, the sons of Noah and their resurrection of um, idolatry and the tabernacles of Ham, or, and Ham went over into the Egypt, and that's where the... Um, their land comes from. So, all right, so we see that. And now we're going to go over here to Job 40, verse 1. Or, I'm um, sorry, Job 41. And we're going to go to Job 41, verse 1, where it talks about Leviathan. Le Leviathan is a reptile. And he is the much like a serpent. He's... They live in the water, but this is talking about Satan, and we know it's talking about Satan, even though it's, um, it's comparable to the crocodile is what they're comparing, but it's actually um, Satan, and we know that because it goes on to describe him further down. It says, He beholds all high things. He is king over all the sons of pride. So we see that seraph, seraphim, and leviathan are all words describing um, Satan. So if we go over here to Isaiah chapter 14 in um, verse 12, um, it's translated Lucifer in the KJV, but it says, O shining star, son of the morning. And that's what they call, G Jesus is called the um, morning star. So stars are ancient ways of saying governments. So keep that in mind as we look through here. Okay, 
So in Ezekiel 28, chapter 28, verse 14, it says, You were the cherub. So I'm trying to study why it says cherub here instead of seraph, because um, that's an interesting little nuance. Because um, you were the cherub anointed that covers, so the covering cherub. Like right here it says, you were the anointed cherub that covers. And I had put you in the holy height of God where you were. So um, that's interesting there. And well, um, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you. And um, so it's actually talking about um, Ethbaal, I believe, the king of Tyr, but it's using it, um, they're using him like as like a parable side by side, and they're describing Satan. And that's Ezekiel um, 28, verse 14. And now we're going to go to, um, let me see, let me see real quick. All right. Yeah, we've already looked at that. So now we're going to go to Ezekiel, or sorry, Revelation chapter 12. Verse 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent being called devil and Satan, he deceiving the whole habitable world, was cast out onto the earth, and his angels were cast with him. So right here, it explains that they are all one thing. The, it says the dragon, the old serpent, the devil, and Satan, those are all one thing. So we see Ophis, and we've researched that, and we see how Serapis and Asclepius and um, these ancient serpent healers is what they were thought of, can be seen as a corruption of the actual truth, which was what we saw in Isaiah 6, um, and we saw in Numbers 21, where Moses makes a fiery serpent, a serpent of brass. And then we see the fiery serpents again in Isaiah chapter 6 there, so... We see that these are all um, one thing again. And um, the fiery dracon, peros is the word fiery, so it's actually this dragon being the same as the serpent. This is the fiery serpent. It's the same exact thing. But this is the wicked one. This is Satan. It's talking about Satan here. So we'll just flip back to the beginning. And um, a lot of people would argue this point, but... Um, if you actually look at these characterizations in chapter 1, so it's been called the gap theory, but I don't subscribe to doctrines made by man. It says, um, And the earth became without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And those are all characteristics of evil in the way that when we lie in sin, and as Jesus said, pray, um, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Um, these are the same kind of concepts here because the, the earth being the governed, and this is also pictures of political things, like because when in the Bible, earthquakes are a picture of political chaos or political overthrow. So we see that the um, just as the poor on this earth are mistreated, like the widows, the poor, and the fatherless are always mistreated, um, these are three characteristics of evil. And um, so this is where Satan is actually fallen. And we can see that connection. So right here in Genesis 3, it shows that he's already on the scene. So Genesis 3 right here. And this is um, Nakash. And that's the same word for the serpent in um, Numbers 21 that Moses made. So the serpent... And we know this is the same as the fiery dracon, and that this is the same as Satan, Diabolos, Revelation says so. So <clears throat> we're going to, um, um, one second. Okay, okay, I remember. We're going to go back over here to Revelations real quick. Revelations chapter 12. Uh, I want to show you that. So we see that um, Satan fell early on. Because he's on the scene there in Genesis chapter 3. As it says, And war occurred in heaven, Michael and his angels making war against 
the dragon and the dragon and his angels made war, but they did not have strength, nor was place yet found. Um, sorry, them in heaven and the great dragon was cast out. So this evilness came down to earth because he was cast out. And then um, he's called the, the ones of the high people and the pride over there in Job chapter 41 we saw. So we see that God brings his heavenly gifts down to the ones that he chooses and loves. And he causes us to be born again, as it says in John 3. So, all right, so now we have a little bit more of an accurate understanding of Satan and some of the key things in Scripture. And um, I hope that that helps. And thanks for watching, and y'all take it easy. Bye.